So it's day three, the elk aren't cooperating. The last time I stopped him, I pulled the trigger, forgot to put the safety off. I am so upset at myself. Unbelievable. That's raw right there. Yeah. That happened really fast. I knew I hit him. I knew he was sick, but he was standing right on a lip. I found blood, so we've got blood. No, I hit him, which I kind of knew that already. All right, let's get some rest. Get a meal. Get back here first light. Yep. Get after it. We'll see what happens. <laughs> That's, that's craziness right there. And we know that we did, we're hunting among wolves, but... They're on our side of the creek. Don't you think? Boy, they didn't sound very far away. They did not sound far away. Oh my goodness, if it was daylight, we'd be... Oh, we'd be in business. We'd be locked. <laughs> Let us at them. <laughs> They're like, they might be on the very ridge that we glass on. Oh man, they're like right there. Your bull's in trouble. Your bull is in trouble. He, they're, they're moving this way, mm -hmm. big time. Oh crap. There's no way they're over 500 yards from us. Mm. And we know, like that's right where we've been glassing. I mean. They went from here to past where dad's been glassing the last couple days looking for elk. So they're coming up this ridge and my bull's back here another, mm, probably about a thousand yards from where they just howled last. But they're, if that, maybe less, yeah. yeah. But they're going right into that drainage where my bull is. I don't know what to expect in the morning. We might have four wolves on that bull elk, which would be horrible, but we may end up shooting some wolves. We got four wolf tags, so that would be pretty cool, but I don't want to lose any meat of Casey's bull, but I'm, I think it's almost a given now, see, seeing how, and the way the winds, the, the thermals are taking that elk scent right down to, in the direction the wolves are, so, I don't know. As I've hunted with pack goats, um, I've learned to trust their instincts. I actually was sitting literally right here uh, last spring with pack goats. And I shot a bear. They saw the bear coming. I was cooking ramen. It was in the middle of the day. They stood up and I looked back and there's a bear and I ended up shooting it. I've learned to trust the go uh, instincts of the goats and Eddie's, Eddie's freaking out. So we're going to put him further down kind of right in the middle of the goats to make him feel safer. Look at me and Matthew's staring. Yes, man. This time of the night, when the goats are tied up, they lay down, they chew their cud, and they chill out. These goats are not chilled up. They're not chewing their cud, they're not laying down, they're all stood up. This is definitely abnormal. Can I sleep in the tent with you guys? <laughs> They're known to go after the guy in the one-man tent by himself. <laughs> don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Day five on the mountain, day four of the hunt. All the hunt basically over with this bull. So we're still really optimistic. I would say cautiously optimistic that we're going to find it. Um, not bothered at all by the lack of blood. Just where we think we hit him and what's happening inside his body when he was going downhill he wasn't going to bleed much without an exit wound so those wolves are adding a different dynamic we're going to get up to the top real close to actually where the last howl was and we're gonna i'm gonna howl and see if we can call them in last year we called in a pack of eight wolves and i killed two of them got the video below if you want to watch that it's pretty cool but we'll see we'll see if we can find this bull pretty pretty excited um don't want to get our hopes up too high. So we got 
cow and a calf spotted. Probably 300 yards from last blood. So, if it's the cows that the bull was with, that's a good sign. That means they stayed in this area. They didn't run off and he followed them, you know, a mile away. So we're just gonna sit tight, see if there's more elk. Um, just kind of observe them and see what happens. Casey just spotted a big bodied elk. There was two cows behind it and he's like, it might be the bull. He even went so far to say that it didn't look like it was carrying itself normal, so we'll see. I never saw the head, but it was a huge body, big tan body, and it was walking into pines. And it just had its head mid, like midway, not down to the ground, but midway. It just didn't look normal. And I had a, two cows behind it, and it was way bigger than the cows. So we think it's a bull. We don't know if it's a bull I shot. Is making some real weird guttural noises and then a couple barks. The three elk that we saw are all behind this group of pines and they haven't moved for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. We'll see what happens. We waited for about a half hour waiting for them to get out of the pines and they never did. So dad crossed over and got right where they were bedded down and ended up jumping them right out of their bed. And so somehow those three elk got through without Nate or I seeing them and, uh, so, but we think it's still a bull, but there is zero blood in its bed. We're going to continue on and assume that that's not the bull I hit. And uh, we're going to head back to our last blood from last night and take it from there. Who's going to want to watch this, though? Us four, we're still tracking them. I'm smiling, but on the inside, I'm crying. No luck, no sign of anything. So we're going to double back and just kind of start at the at the basics, at the fundamentals of where we think he went and make sure he went where we think he went by checking the blood again. Maybe he doubled back, maybe he turned, made a 90 degree turn where we weren't, we made some assumptions and wrong assumptions. So we're gonna check that out and continue on. Sliver in the back. Yeah. So Nate, I'm gonna go to the top. You be in the, between dad and me. Okay. So I got roughly to where I thought the game trail was. Honestly starting to go right back to the crossing and I got a whiff of like something sour. And I was like, checked the wind and got, you know, where it was coming from, which is right above me. And I was like, you know, I'm gonna go up there and check that out. And then I noticed ravens flying and crowing way up ahead of me. And I was like, hmm. So, you know, I'm, I don't think it's my elk. I still haven't found it, but anyways, I, I, when I, when those ravens, I was like, man, this is something. So I kept going and then, but I saw brush moving and I, I, I heard brush. I looked and like what the little bush moved. I was like, what? So I'm thinking wolf. So then I'm, I creep up there, creep up there to the side and see movement. And I look up and it's a black bear and I put the scope on and he's looking at me broadside. I'm like, man, it looks like a pretty big bear. He's only like 25 yards from me. And I'm like, man, I don't want to pack that out. That's a long pack. And then I was like, ah, oh, okay, I'm going to shoot it. And then he started to move and he, he got out of sight. And I was like, ah, oh, man. And I'm thinking about film. I'm like, it's not going to be on film. <laughs> so then I was like, all right, I'm going to try to shoot this. So then I kept creeping up, didn't see him. And I was like, all right, I'll go a different way. So I crept up, didn't see him. I was like, he's got to be here. I went 20 yards forward. And out of the corner of my eye, I see a black blob. And I just, I knew it was him. And I just turned and he was 20 yards from me, facing me, just looking at me. And he, as soon as I stopped and turned, he ran straight away and I just, I cow called. And he turned broadside and looked at me and pulled the trigger. While I'm going up there, I walk by this big, huge bear pile and I'm smelling it and there's ravens. I'm like, he's defending his kill. What the heck am I doing? <laughs> safety off running <laughs> so that was really super exciting that was pretty exhilarating my wife would not be happy that i just did that he turned went down in the ditch didn't get out of the ditch that's like yeah 10 yards we'll 
Well, sometimes youth and excitement and adrenaline will make you do things you might regret. We're like nine miles from our truck and 1,000, 1,500 feet elevation down and over 3,000 foot back up to the truck. So by the time we get to the truck, I might regret this, but, but I'm glad we got to save some elk calf lives and maybe some deer fawn lives as well. We should get back to camp. It'll definitely be dark, obviously, but somewhat reasonable time. And then, and then we'll just have to wait and see what happens when we get back to camp. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for uh, sticking with us on the seven-day journey. We had two full days of travel in and out. We had three days of hunting. We had the bears and the wolves and, uh, and three uh, shot opportunities. And I hit a big bull, and we searched for over two full days for that. Never found it. Pretty bummed, still don't know exactly what happened, where I hit it. Um, but we just I just hope that th these videos just did this story justice of what we did and inspires you to do hard things and go and do tough things and have an adventure. And when things get tough, just keep putting one foot in front of the other and, and keeping going. So. All right, guys. Hey, thanks for sticking with us. Like, subscribe, share, hit the notification. We just appreciate all the comments that you give and everything that you mean to us.